In this video, we're going to look at these two topics, counting principles and binomial coefficients. We've already really seen this first principle, the sum rule principle, and we've also seen the next one that we're going to look at. But in this case, we're going to define them in terms of experiments. What are we talking about in terms of experiments? So I'll give the first rule, uh, the first part of the rule that we've seen before, and then I'll talk about it in terms of experiments. The, fir the sum rule here, we've seen that uh, suppose A and B are disjoint sets, meaning they have no elements in common, then the, the number of elements in A union B is equal to the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B. This can only be true for disjoint sets. Now in terms of experiments, uh, let's look at the next definition. Suppose some event E can occur M ways and the s other event F can occur n ways, and suppose they cannot occur simultaneously, then the number of elements or the number of uh, ways that E or F can occur is m plus n. So when we're doing an experiment, we look at the outcome. The outcome will be either one of the elements or one of the events in E or one of the events in F. It won't be both of those. And therefore, the total number of ways that we can have events occur would be n plus m <coughs> or m plus n oops sorry the next rule is the product rule <coughs> um, we've seen this one before also suppose a and b are finite sets then when we look at the product set a cross b the total number of elements in a cross b is going to be the number of elements in a times the number of elements in B. Now in terms of experiments, <coughs> suppose some event can occur M ways, and independent of this, uh, event F can occur N ways. Now in the experiment we're going to do combinations of those E and F, and we know that the number of ways that, total number of ways that we can have the outcomes would be N, M, sorry, M times N. So when we do our experiment, we do it, we do it, and we'll have an event at E, and then we'll also have an event F. And so the total number of you know, final events that we can have or, or combinations of those, those events would be M times N. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. <coughs> Suppose E is a random digit, so we've got 0 through 9, <coughs> excuse me, 0 through 9 for E, and F is a random letter A through Z and the first part here we're gonna look at how many ways can we make one place on a license plate so a, a place on a license plate in this case can be either a number or a letter now it can be both obviously so it can be either a number or a letter so they can occur simultaneously the number of of numbers that we have of course is 10 the number of letters we have is 26 and therefore the number of possibilities that we have for that one spot on our license plate would be e number of e plus the number of f or 36 now let's look at a license plate <coughs> a different license plate um, where we have two places on the license plate and in this case we're only allowing a number for the first digit or the first element followed by a letter. So we're doing an experiment where we are picking a, a number and then picking a letter randomly. What? How many different ways can we do that? Well, that of course f um, makes a product set and the elements would be like 2b or 6q and so on. Those are the, the possible outcomes that we would have for this license plate. The total number of possibilities that we would have for that license plate with two those those types of letters in them would be the number of elements in E times the number of elements in F and in this case we have 10 for the first because we have just a number first and then 26 because we have a letter second and therefore the total number of possibilities we have is 260. All right now let's look at binomial coefficients. Uh, you've probably done some of this in your in an algebra class. If we look at multiplying or squaring the element a plus b, we know that 
you know, when we multiply those out, we get a times a, which would be a squared. We get a times b. And then we also have b times a, and then b squared. Now we know that in, in algebra, order doesn't matter. So in other words, a times b is the same as b times a. Therefore, these two, these two elements that we have up here are the same element. So we can combine those to be 2 times a times b. Now if we look at the coefficients we have for this polynomial here, we have 1, 2, and 1. If we go to a a plus b cubed, we can work this out, but we know that we're going to get an, end up with a a cubed 3 times a squared times b plus a 3 times a times b squared plus b cubed. And if we look at the coefficients, we have 1, 3, 3, 1. Now, looking at Pascal's triangle, um, and we'll relate this to what we were just talking about, Pascal's triangle, we start with a 1 at the top, right up here. Then, uh, so that's with n equals 0. With n equals 1, we have a 1 and a 1. Now think about what we were doing just a minute ago. If we had a plus b to the 0, we know that we just that's just going to be 1. If we have a plus b to the 1, we have just an a plus b. So we have 1 and 1. If we have a squared, which we've already done, we have 1, 2, 1, and so on. We already did one. the next one down, which would be 1, 3, 3, 1. And the next one down, we know, uh, using Pascal's triangle, we can generate this one from the previous one. So what we do is we take the 1 down, repeat that 1. We know we're going to repeat a 1 on the end, so we can put that one there. And the way we generate the other coefficients is we take two coefficients from above, add them together to get this one. So this one would be 1 plus 3 gives us 4. The middle one would be 3 plus 3 gives us 6. And the next one, of course, would be 3 plus 1 gives us 4. Now we can keep on going as far as we want to get higher order polynomials. What do we notice about this Pascal's triangle? There's two things that we I want to point out here. First, it's symmetric. So if we draw a line straight down here, down the middle, then it's a mirror image on either side. So notice that we have here on this last one, 4 and 4, 1 and 1. So it's symmetric. And we also said that we can generate it from the previous row. So we can generate the next row from the previous row. Now in terms of binomial coefficients, uh, we can show this binomial coefficient two different ways. Well, minimum two different ways. There's, there's lots of other ways too. We'll, we'll see those in a different video. But in this case, we're going to look at showing it with brackets with an N and an R. The other way, one other way we can do it is with a C and an N, R like this. But what that is equal to, the binomial coefficient is over here. We'll have N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. Now in this case, R goes from 0 to N. Okay, so that's how we generate the binomial coefficient. Now, so remember we said that it was symmetric. And this property says that it's symmetric. So the binomial coefficient with n, r, is also equal to, on that same row, the binomial coefficient n, and then n minus r. And we'll, we'll look at this property in a minute. Also, we can generate it from the previous row. So notice that here we have n plus 1. That's the row number. And we're using two coefficients from the previous row, n, to generate the current element in row n plus 1. And so this is our, our recursive form of generating the, the binomial coefficients. So let's do an example of just generating the coefficients for n equals 3. We've already done this, done this one for uh, the polynomial, but let's take a look at how do we generate it. n is equal to 3, so we're looking at our third order pol polynomial. So we can just substitute 3 in for n. So we have 3 here and a 3 here. And then we need to change the r values. The r values will give us the different values on the row. So the first one would be r equals 0. 
set r equal to zero there on our co on our um, the way we represent it. And then on the bottom we'll have well, on the top we'll have three square three factorial. On the bottom we'll have zero factorial and three minus zero factorial. We know that three minus zero factorial will just get three factorial. Zero factorial of course is just one. And therefore we just get one for that whole coefficient. We set r equal to one and we just keep on going through all these. We'll still have three factorial on the top, one factorial here, and then this will become two factorial. So two factorial is just two times one. Those will cancel th with the top and we'll just be left with three. The next one r equals 2, we'll have on the top 3 factorial, bottom 2 factorial, and then 3 minus 2 factorial. This becomes 1, and then this is our 2 factorial. Notice that now it really looks like the 1 above it. So we'll have a 2 factorial on the on bottom here. That'll cancel and we'll just be left with 3. And finally, when we get to the last one, r equals 3, we should just end up with 1 and it'll look exactly like it did on this one up here. All right, so we see that we have our binomial coefficients. We can set any r value and any n value and come up with those coefficients. One last thing I wanted to show you is that the binomial coefficients, a lot of times you can find references that have the coefficients already calculated for you in tables. Uh, here's one that I've, I've taken from, a, I think, a Shams outline and <clears throat> you can see that we have the n down the left hand column and then the rows show us all the coefficients for that particular uh, order order it being the n value now on the table notice that it has you know the whole polynomial for some of the lower values so we have like for 5 we've got 1 5 10 10 5 1 However, once you get up to these higher ones, it starts cutting them off. Now, of course, we know that the polynomials are symmetric, and so once we get up to these higher orders, we don't need them past the midpoint because it'll just be the same coefficients again. So you can look at, let's say, n equals 14 and get all the coefficients for that polynomial uh, going, all, going across. And notice that you can see here in the middle this one, 14, starts repeating here. This middle point is going to be 3, 4, 3, 2. And then notice we've got 3, 0, 0, 3 here and 3, 0, 0, 3 here. And so we've got, you know, all of the polynomial that we need up to the midpoint.